opportunity of being here today, and you're in for a special treat. I'm so pleased to welcome uh, Carrie Perry from the University of Washington. Um, <laughs> and Carrie is the Academic Services Director in the Psychology Department, and she's going to talk about the requirements you need for admission, all the good stuff, and answer questions for you, okay? Uh, the one thing I want to say is that uh, Carrie has to leave by 2.20, so if you have questions, make sure you write it down so that you can ask her and uh, we need to get her out, out of here by 2.20, okay? So are you all set, ready to hear from the expert? All right, so <laughs> no <pressure>. go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I love everyone's got the cookies in their mouth there. <laughs> um, so I will say that I have um, handouts as well as business cards and so <coughs> if you think of a question later that I didn't answer or we don't have time you know feel free to email me directly or give me a call and I'm happy to, to talk with you later um, we also are always really happy to have students come visit us in the psych department um, we I know some departments don't kind of have the capacity to see prospective students but we definitely do and would love to see you as soon as you're thinking that you want to be there um, UW does run every Thursday, uh, Transfer Thursdays in the afternoon, and it's sort of a combination of, you know, hearing from admissions and financial aid, and then we have an uh, individual psych session every Thursday at 3.30 that kind of follows that directly. So you're always welcome to come to that or to make an individual appointment. We're happy to see you anytime. So I have a bunch of things that I always, you know, try to cover. Um, so I'll be checking my little list now and then. Um, one thing I would say kind of at the outset is sometimes we end up kind of veering a little bit into people asking a lot of questions about getting into graduate school. So I probably ask that just for the sake of time that we just kind of think mostly about undergraduate right now. I'll touch a little bit on how our program prepares you for different kinds of graduate programs. Um, but, you know, we'll go with this, this step for now. Uh, but again, you know, if you've got more questions and you want to follow up with me happy to do that. Um, so I, I, it's so gorgeous out today. I think last year when I came it was raining, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's just, it's beautiful. And I always joke that, you know, if I had like a little powerboat, I could be here like that. Because if you look across the water to Vashon Island, you're, we're directly across here from Point Robinson. And if you could get out of your little boat at Point Robinson and walk a mile and a half, half up the road, that's where I live. So I, you know, I was looking at the kind of map quest today and because and I always try to remember which streets to turn on and, and it's like, okay, there's this point that I'm at, there's this point I'm going to, and this is how you get there. <laughs> so, so it's always a fun little trip to come over. Um, so I, you know, as Sula said, I've been at the university for a very long time, in the psych department for a very long time. Um, so I'm going to cover kind of some of the basics about what our programs like, how it's set up, and admission requirements to the major, kind of the things that you can be doing here at Highline to, you know, when you transfer to kind of be as ready as possible to get into the major. Um, and definitely, you know, I would say as we go along, if you have questions, just, you know, shout them out or raise your hand or, you know, whatever works for you, just so we make sure we get to cover them. So, um, we, do, we are one of the largest majors on campus. Um, we have usually about 1,000 undergraduate majors in psychology. So we're you know, a little bit behind biology. Um, but other than that, I think in the College of Arts and Sciences, we're, we're maybe second largest, huge. Um, wonderful faculty who are most of them doing current, you know, really on the edge of research um, and so you're having the opportunity to both take classes from them and also to work with them as part of their research teams. They um, almost all of our research labs will take on undergraduate students to work with them for anywhere from one to three or more quarters and so it's a great way to get to see you know the inner workings of a research lab and look at how things are studied from that perspective. Um, and I think that's something that as a huge, you know, research one institution that makes us unique. Um, and it's, you know, you get the bigness, which is sometimes a downside, but you also get, you know, the, a really huge range of opportunities to get involved in, and learn things from different perspectives. Um, we do have faculty who are doing work in, I'm trying to remember all the areas in animal behavior behavioral neuroscience, 
um, adult and child clinical psychology, child development, cognition and perception, uh, social and personality, uh, a couple people in quantitative psychology, and I feel like I'm missing one, but um, I think that's, that's mainly it. So those, all of those areas are, are represented in our undergraduate curriculum to one extent or another, and um, so there is a good opportunity to, while we don't have um, specialized tracks within the major, students often do end up kind of creating their own if they've got, let's say, a particular interest in cognition and perception. They're going to take our core level course, move on to more advanced upper division courses, and perhaps do research or field work in the community related to that. Um, what we do have in the way of tracks is we offer both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science. And um, I think people often hear the word science and imagine chemistry and biology. And our Bachelor of Science is really um, has a much heavier quantitative emphasis. So you're going to do math through the calculus level. You're going to do a more in-depth two-quarter statistics series. Uh, there'll be a requirement to do undergraduate research. It's, it's mainly the aim of that track is to prepare students best who want to perhaps go on to research-oriented graduate programs in psychology. So you get that stronger um, foundation in data analysis and research. Um, we have, though, you know, over the years, I'm sure, you know, if you look around in the community and you look at the companies that are hiring and what they're hiring in, everything is very data-driven. And so we do nowadays certainly have a number of our students who choose our Bachelor of Science track, not so much because they want to go into a research PhD in psych, but because they want to get that stronger foundation in quantitative and data analysis. So um, that can be a reason to do that. We, I would say a little bit fewer than a third of our students do the Bachelor of Science, the others doing the Bachelor of Arts. Um, both will prepare you very well for graduate programs, in particular in applied psychology areas like social services, social work, um, counseling, therapy. So I think students hear very often um, kind of blanket statements when they get to UW about if you want to go to graduate school, you need to get a Bachelor of Science. Not true. So remember, you heard that here. Is that true? Not true. <laughs> so um, definitely not. It's just that if you do want to go the research route, the BS is probably a little bit stronger foundation. Um, there's about a 25 credit difference between those two tracks. And so a reason to perhaps choose the Bachelor of Arts over the Bachelor of Science is that it frees up 25 credits to you know, sort of spend in another way. So you can spend that maybe with a second major, a minor, by earning credit for field work or research, um, studying abroad. So there are a lot of reasons to, to think carefully about that choice. And I think in particular, when you're coming in as a transfer student, and in most cases, you're coming in at the start of your junior year. And so many people would like, you know, in those circumstances, to only spend two years finishing that undergraduate degree. And so that you know, means really careful thought about how to prepare. Yeah. When you're applying to graduate school, let's say, like, mm -hmm. either or, like, like is, is it more preferable? Like, it really, the label BABS itself isn't going to matter. It's, it's more, if you're applying to a research-focused graduate program, what you want to present to that program as the candidate is a really in-depth research experience and you want to be very strong in the quantitative areas. Just, you know, to some extent they'll look for that, but more than that, our graduate students all tell us, you know, the better you are at statistics and data analysis, the more you hit the ground running when you start your graduate program. So it kind of just helps you. Yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'll talk. I'll, I'll sort of move a little bit into talking about our um, admissions and prerequisites for our major. So some students, you know, more and more students now are transferring from Washington Community Colleges, ready to apply to our major. Um, still, the vast majority are not. They still have, you know, one or two classes that they still need to take. Um, but more and more, you know, the community colleges are starting to offer equivalents to all of our psych courses. Um, uh, Highline's done that for quite some time, so has, has been kind of leading 
leading edge on that. Um, th those prerequisites are intro psychology, which definitely you have that here. Uh, biopsychology, some schools call it physiological psychology, um, and psych research methods. And I believe you still have all those here. Um, so if you're able to get all this done before you transfer to UW, awesome. If you're not, you're going to get into what you still need in your first quarter. We'll save spaces for you and get you in there. So don't feel like if you, know, you just kind of missed out on taking that class, it's not going to impact your admission to UW, it's not going to impact your ultimate admission to the major. So it'll just take a tiny bit longer. Um, so there are those three classes, and then there's a math prerequisite. And um, there are two ways you can go on this. Um, admission to the major requires math either, I'm looking at my little notes, through your, I think it's your math, you call it Math 111? Yeah. yeah. Either Math 111 or the Math 141-142 combination. And Math 111 transfers to UW as R Math 111. Math 141-142 transfers to UW as math, R Math 120, which is pre-calculus. And then you get another five credits of gen, you know, general math credit. Um, if you, before transferring, have a you know, strong notion that you're probably going to want to pursue the Bachelor of Science in Psych, I would definitely suggest the 141-142 route. Make sure you take both of them, though. Because to get into UW, 141 alone is fine, or 142 alone is fine if you test it into it. But to earn the credit that you need toward the major, the 120, you actually have to take both of them. Um, and then to your question about calculus, if you do want to go that Bachelor of Science route and therefore are going to need calculus in order to get into our statistics classes for the Bachelor of Science, then moving on to your Math 151 here is um, the best thing to do, if possible. Um, so I, I feel, you know, generally speaking, that any courses that are in sequences, if you can take the entire sequence at a single institution, it's advantageous usually because there often is not, you know, real perfect articulation from one institution to another. So it may be a little bit bumpy, um, not impossible, but where you can get an entire series done, try to do that if possible. The same, and this is kind of an aside, but the same actually holds true for foreign languages. Um, foreign language requirement to be admitted to UW is either two years of a high school language or two quarters, like 101, 102, of a college language. The requirement to get out of the University of Washington to graduate is either three years of a single high school language or uh, three quarters through the third quarter first year series of the college level language. Um, so if you're in a situation where you know, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to take through French 102, and I'm good to go to get into UW. That's awesome. You are. But then you're going to have to ultimately take French 103 or Spanish 103 or whatever your language is when you're there. And that just kind of adds to the, you know, set in stone requirements that you'd rather get done here, if possible, so that you can sort of sample from a wider range of choices and have more latitude in choosing your courses when you get there. If you are a native speaker of another language and UW defines that as a language that was spoken in your home and that you were schooled in through kind of the equivalent of our seventh grade, then that makes you a native speaker and it, that takes care of the requirement right there. So if you have any questions about that, you can email me or, and I can put you in touch with admissions if I don't know the answer. So, so those are our prerequisites. We do admit to the major every quarter, including summer. and Admission is competitive. It's not like crazy wild competitive, like Foster School of Business and bioengineering and places you know like that. But it is competitive. And what we're looking at very specifically is the cumulative GPA for those three psych courses. And we want that cumulative GPA to be about a 3.2 or higher. Um, we all know that people have rough quarters. Things go on in your life hit some bumps along the way. If you have a quarter when you know, one of those three courses just didn't really work out the way you would like, um, you can retake that course. Both grades are always part of your academic record. 
but the retake, the higher grade, is what we will look at. So we kind of give you a do-over if you need to retake that course. You know, I've had students retake two courses. I've had students sometimes retake three courses. That starts to get a little time consuming and you start to feel like there's the wall in your head and maybe you don't want to continue there. Um, and, you know, at that point, that's where a conversation with me or one of my colleagues in psych advising would be, you know, is, is this really the route that you want to go? So, but um, we do understand certainly that people have missteps and need second chances to do things. Um, that is really the, you know, people will ask, is there an essay? Is there a statement of interest? Is there, letter, are there letters of recommendation required? No to all of those. And on the one hand, you know, it is a very cut and dried admission process. And on the one hand, that's great because you know exactly what you need to do to get in. On the other hand, it kind of stinks sometimes because you want to be able to explain things or, you know, talk about your goals and your, you know, and, and have other things evaluated. What I would say is I very much enjoy working with transfer students. I, I think that um, it's a group that brings a tremendous amount of diversity to our university, to our department, and a diversity of experiences, really. Um, you know, I have folks who I work with who are single parents, who are older students, um, who are veterans, who are international students, who have been working in three or four careers already. And so that people are just bringing you know, a real richness of experience. And so I work, one of my colleagues says you know, too closely, but I don't think that's true, um, with our transfer students. And I have a particular commitment to you because I feel like if, if you've put in two years of effort You've done everything you can. You got into UW, which is fantastic. I'm going to do everything I can to help you continue along that path toward your goal. So I will sometimes, with our transfer students, in particular, with everybody, but in particular our transfer students, I will sometimes take other things into consideration. And so just know that there are humans working there in my department. And I try to be um, that very human face when it comes to admissions and, and thinking about things. Because, you know, you get there, maybe you still had to take a final course. You're applying to the major in your second or even third quarter at UW. I, I don't really feel like that's a time to tell you to start over with something else. So feel fairly confident that I'm going to work well with you. Yes? So um, for a writing start student, mm -hmm. You, you still bring all the credits, and so it's kind of funny. You, you come in as a freshman, and like if, if I look at somebody's um, transcript, I was just looking at someone last week, and you could, we code them on the transcript. They're a number one if they're freshman, two sophomore, three junior, four senior. And this was a Running Start student. She brought 90 credits with her, all of which were applying toward her ultimate credits for the degree. And in that first quarter, she's a one. In her second quarter, she's a three. So you come in as a freshman, and then boom, you're a junior the next quarter. But it is you know, a different um, pool of applicants that you're part of on you know, the point of entry to UW. So, yeah. So you get all the credits, definitely. Um, other questions about, the tr about that point of transfer or of you know, application or admission to the major? Yes. I just want to repeat. So, uh, Right, right. So if the more of those you can finish here at Highline, the better. Um, for if, if you're able to finish all those and you come to UW and you're in your first quarter, you're going to apply to the major in that very first quarter. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Michelle. So if you do miss out on one of those and you transfer in, um, students come into UW 
in fall quarter, um, it's when the vast majority of students transfer in, or in um, winter quarter, not in spring. And you also do the, have the option of applying for summer, kind of summer slash fall. Um, for fall quarter, we typically see about 85 or 90 incoming UW students who are planning to be psych majors. And we work with our first year programs office to sort of design specialized orientations for those students so that they're getting orientation to the university, but they're also getting a really in-depth orientation to the psychology major department. You'll meet all the advisors, you'll meet some faculty, some alumni, some peers who are gonna you know, be, who are just like a year ahead of you in the process, um, but who all came in as transfer students. And so it, we help, we try to help you from that first day, that first orientation day, start to form some community and, and find your go-to people and places, because that's, man, it's, you get there and you really feel like you have to hit the ground running because you didn't have the, two, the freshman and sophomore year to sort of figure it all out. So um, we try to do what we can to make that process um, more possible. Um, I also, in fall quarters, offer a two credit class um, that is specifically for incoming transfer students. Um, this year I have 70 students in the class, so they're all in their first quarter at UW. Most of them came from Washington Community Colleges, and it allows them in that first quarter to take a lighter academic load, for one thing, because it's two credits, and then if they're taking two five credit ac academic classes, they're at the 12 credits they need if they have financial aid or veterans benefits or international students. Um, but it also, you know, the, the main thing is that it gives everybody in that class a really in-depth orientation to the major, the department, resources available to students. You know, we'll spend an entire day talking about getting involved in research, an entire day getting involved in field work, a day talking about study abroad, a day about career development. Um, so we, you know, and, and through that you're working, you know, in that class with peer leaders who were in your seats the year before and with fellow first quarter transfer students. So it really helps in that first quarter when you're like, oh my gosh, they said it was going to be different and I didn't quite see how it was going to be this different, but it, it is. It's, there's something about the, uh, the feeling of the pace and um, hugeness of the university and you know the, the overwhelming kind of feeling of trying to navigate through all of this and do it on your own. So we try to give you kind of an infrastructure to help you land on your feet. So, so those are possibilities. We don't offer those things for people coming in in winter, at least at this time, because it's a much smaller group and so we just kind of don't have the capacity to do that. But we still, for incoming winter students, will meet with those students individually and do individual um, advising sessions as part of their orientation. So they're still going to get a personal welcome from us. Yeah. Not really. Not really. Um, we admit pretty equivalent numbers of students in each of fall, winter, and spring. We admit a much smaller group in summer, and so summer is actually our super competitive quarter. This, um, you know, I mentioned before, typically that cumulative GPA for fall, winter, and spring is going to be about a 3.2. In summer, it's usually about a 3.6. This past summer it was a 3.8. So just to we had, we had just like a huge number of people with, with tremendously high GPAs applying that quarter and not a lot of capacity. So that was, a, that was kind of horrible to write those emails and say, oh gosh, you have a 3.7, I'm sorry, that's not quite good enough. So, but they all got in this quarter. So they're all, they're good, they're in, they're happy. So um, other things I need to make sure to cover, yeah. Yeah, I, we sort of, for that situation specifically, the summer to fall, um, the email that we send students is, you know, gosh, once again, our summer admissions were extremely competitive. Um, if you would like us to just sort of slide your application into the fall virtual pile, um, let us know. And so you don't, you don't have to, as the student, do more legwork on it. You just need to say, yes, please. Move it on down the road. So. Um, 
So I can t I'll talk a little bit more about some of the resources available, but we'll also stop and see if folks have other questions at this time about any of the logistics or. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, like classes in psychology? No, actually. So, classes in the major are kind of divided into our gateway classes the 101, 202, 209, and a few other 200 level electives that are open to all students. And then everything else at the 3 and 400 level is primarily majors only. Um, some of them do open up in our registration period every quarter is broken down into a couple of different portions. And um, all of our revision courses are initially every quarter open only to current majors. Um, and some of them in a later or you know, registration period open up to pre-majors. But you, you can't do the major without being in the major, basically. So, um, so you want to, if you're not getting into the major, you want to come and meet with me and see kind of what the issues are. Is it, kind of, is it a pretty simple, I need to retake biopsych, do a little bit better, and chances are you know, great of that happening? Or am I kind of, again, hitting my head against the same wall, and that is probably a wall that you're going to keep seeing in our classes before it goes away, and so then it's just kind of a, we're never going to say you, you cannot apply again, but, but sometimes I'm going to say, you know, this might not be the best choice. So let's think about what your goals are for your life and your career and future education. And is there another pathway to do that? And there pretty much always is another pathway because we're not, you know, a vocational technical major. So you don't come out with you know, like the stamp that says you are a this or that, you know, it's not licensed to be something with the degree that we offer. So there's almost always another way to get there um, that sometimes might work better for your learning style, um, the way you express yourself. So once in a while, those conversations end up with a different path, but sometimes they end up with a plan of action to continue on the path. But, um, but there, there aren't a lot of site courses that you can take without being in the major. So getting in is important. Yes? If that 3.7 student, for example, doesn't get in because of the capacity issue, mm -hmm. and they move over to the fall, would, and would they typically run through the state barrier? Or would they be admitted at that point? Yeah, a 3.7 student, the summer 3.7, is for sure going to get in in fall. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And we do, it's, it's not that we have arbitrarily set this 3.2, and we actually don't have a GPA cutoff <coughs> that says 3.2. We have a quota of students we can take each quarter, and that what we do in the summer is we look at, okay, we graduated 475 students last year. We can take in maybe 500 students this coming year, and we break it down by quarter. So let's say in a given quarter, our, the quota that we're looking at is 150 students, perhaps. We get the applications. We sort of, you know, sort them in our database by highest admission GPA to, to less high, and go down and wherever that 150 is, that's going to be that cutoff for, you know, for that quarter, and it has very reliably settled into about a 3.2. So that's that's where that comes from. We feel like shooting for that, you're pretty safe. So, yeah. Yes, of those three psychology classes specifically. The math course that's the prerequisite just needs to be at least a 2.0, but it's not part of that equation, which for some people that's like awesome, and some people's <laughs> like, I'm so good at math, <laughs> that's too bad. So um, we do have a lot of our students making the BA versus BS decision based on comfort level in math, very honestly. Yeah. You apply to the major broadly. And part of the application does ask if you intend to do the BA or BS. Um, just because we, 
Well, we have to code you as, as one of the two when, when you're admitted, but you can change back and forth. Like if you come in as a BA student and you decide you want to switch to BS, you're not applying again. We're just filling out a piece of paper. So, yeah, and we do have people change. More often than not, they're changing from the BS to the BA at some point because they're feeling like they're running out of time or have had a you know, change of plans in their goals. Um, but sometimes the other direction. Um, so other questions about grades or admission? Yeah. Well, if anyone has any other questions. That's okay. Because <laughs> right. this is a little more like personalized for me, so I don't want to like, keep anyone from asking other questions. But like, for me, I plan on like, I'm doing a bio AA right now. Mm -hmm. So I hope to, because I want to be a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. school, right. And getting my uh, prereqs for medical mm -hmm. while I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. So, for, in my instance, which would be more preferable? Like doing People would assume BS, yeah. but no. Um, and, you know, so she's talking about she's going to be doing pre med coursework as well as um, a major. The range of pre, you know, pre med coursework is like doing another major, um, it's pretty similar pre nursing, um, pre physical therapy is also pretty hefty. Uh, Pre-occupational therapy, not quite as much. Um, but if you are planning to go into a health profession, ultimately in a graduate or a professional program that's health profession related, um, definitely be working very closely with your advisors here because you want to be able to start taking things that, you know, you don't want to get to UW and now say, I need to start my whole pre-med sequence. That'll, that'll hurt. So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a question. That's that becomes a deciding point, I think, uh, for students. A lot of times, uh, med schools don't care at all if you had a BA or BS. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. so it it really doesn't it's matter. It it's not really more. It's more quantitative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's you know honestly, if if your aim is really to go to med school, it BA versus BS doesn't matter. So. And it's the same kind of issue if you want to do another major or if you want to spend two quarters studying abroad. Um, it, it becomes choices. And you know you can either stay at UW a little bit longer, um, which costs a little bit more, right, um, and, and postpones the rest of life. Or you can you know, really think carefully about planning and you know, prioritizing and making decisions about the route that you want to take. So, and we'll help you with that. I mean, that's, that's huge part of what we do. Um, you know, I, we do a lot of the, you know, nuts and bolts of what should I be signing up for next quarter and I need to apply to graduate and all of that. But the much more interesting work that we do and, and I think the work that is more helpful for our students is, you know, working with you individually to say, okay, these are my goals or these are my interests. How do I sort of put together a whole, you know, portfolio that includes both my in-class academics and other experiences so that I can get to that point? And so that's where we're going to talk to you about getting involved in research, getting involved volunteering and interning in the community and trying things out and finding out what you like, what you don't like, you know, opening doors and closing doors. Closing the doors part is actually very valuable. Um, so and when doors get closed there, in my experience with students, more often than not being closed by the student and not on the student. <laughs> so it's usually, you know, wow, I thought that I really wanted to do this. I've tried it out. And I like this part of it, but not that, much, that other stuff. So I'm going to go now this way. So um, it's fun for us. And you know, we can draw on the years of experience we have working with students and the connections we have in the community, hopefully, to help you find that path that really works well for you. Um, I'm also a super big advocate, I've mentioned it a few times, of studying abroad. Um, UW has a lot of different kinds of programs. If that's, is that something that interests anybody? A couple people, yeah. And I think a lot of times you, you, know, you get some, you know, to UW and you think, oh my gosh, I've got two years here. How can I possibly do that? Um, there are lots of ways to do it. There are different kinds of programs all the way from going abroad for an entire year um, to going abroad for, you know, two or three weeks. Um, and so it, there, there's a program that, that usually is going to meet your needs. And um, we have a wonderful study abroad office. 
I have great contacts there that I, I put students in touch with. And um, I'm also the one who works with you know, students when they come back. You know, here are the courses I took at the University of New South Wales. How are they going to apply toward my degree program? I'm the one who, who does those evaluations. And I usually meet with students before they go to think about the kind of courses that they might take. And then when they come back to do those final evaluations, and I'm super flexible with, you know, let's say it's a course we need it to fulfill a particular co group of core courses. And it's not quite exactly like anything in that core group, but it kind of fits the spirit of it. Um, I'm going to put it in that category for you because, you know, I want you to be able to have that experience. Um, I had, you know, the great fortune of being able to study abroad when I was in college. Back in those days, if you went abroad, you went for an entire year and you went in your junior year. That was just like how it happened. And so that's what I did and it was fantastic. But I find with most of the students I work with that leaving for a year is, is often not feasible. A lot of people seem to have a lot more commitments and responsibilities this year than I did. <laughs> so I was very lucky, yeah. No, you don't need that for admission to the major. So, yeah. Well, that's just an addition that you could do while you're there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And but you know, when you think about what you want to do when you graduate from a four-year school, you probably want to go right into a career path, or you maybe want to go to a graduate or professional school. And all those experiences are the things that are going to help you get there. You know not only do they help you sort of refine your interests and know what the correct direction is for you to be going, but they kind of serve as proofs to the program or the employer of your, you know, your background, your experience, your aptitude in that area, your dedication to the area. Um, so they're, they're both a good way to sort of try things out and also get the experience that you need either to get a job or to get into a graduate program. We don't require them. They're not required to graduate, um, with just a bit of an exception. But um, it's you know as they are for some programs. Some programs require a hefty number of experiential hours, and we we don't. Um, but it's definitely recommended. And for our students, there is. It's rarely difficult to find the time within your schedule to do that because they are all credit-bearing opportunities. So you're earning credit if you're volunteering in the community. You're earning credit if you're doing research with our faculty. You're earning credit if you're um, doing peer teaching. So it's a way to sort of fold it into you know, the whole package and have time to do it. Because I know most people are working um, at least some hours a week. and. Many people have families and other responsibilities. So if we, you know, if we didn't give you the opportunity to earn credit for these experiences, you know, for m many people, it's just not feasible to add it to an already very full academic schedule in life. Well, so UW, the PhD program at UW is probably one of the most competitive in the country. So, um, and it is a strictly research focused program. Um, so it's, even our clinical program, so the aim of those programs is to train clinical researchers. So people who are going to stay in academia, they're going to become professors and researchers at universities. Um, it's, the aim is not to train people to go out into practice and to be, you know, practicing psychologists and practice, you know, or therapists. The people in our clinical program certainly are qualified to do that because that's part of the training that they get, but the aim of our program is to train researchers. And so for any kind of research-focused graduate program, what that pro program is going to look for is for your background, experience, and interest to mesh well with what they actually do there. So that becomes kind of a whole research project in itself to figure out where you're going to apply. Mm -hmm. To get into, like, let's say you do your dissertation work, was, was, is it more like first come, first serve, like whoever wants to know about first, or is it like, OK, we're going to like, do like, because I know it's like really like a lot of people want to do one research program or something like that. Right. 
they're really competitive. They look at, you know, and this is, I don't want to go into this too much, but, um, but we can talk, you know, by email or phone afterwards, certainly. Um, a research-focused program is looking for candidates who are going to be good fits for their program and who have backgrounds that demonstrate that. So, you know, and, and it kind of varies from program to program. Some programs, it's more like you're actually applying to work with a particular person than it is that you're applying to the program broadly. That's what our university is like. Uh, but other even research-focused programs and other programs at UW are not quite that way. So it's a lot of exploring to do. Yeah, a question? Yeah. Yeah, so she's, she's asking, you know, if you did an undergraduate degree at an institution and then you applied to their graduate program, do you have a better or, or worse chance of getting in? Our program, you know, there is that thinking generally that it's academically healthier to go somewhere else for your graduate work. You get new perspectives. You bring your perspectives to a new institution. But at least talking about our program, that being said, so I've been in that department, I'm in year 23 now, and they typically, for the, the whole of our site graduate programs, get something like six to 800 applicants for about what ends up being about 15 spots. Um, and in every year that I've been there, at least one of those spots has been someone who got their undergraduate degree from us. So, so the, big, the first answer is yes, generally, that's the thinking. In practice, that's not always how it happens. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the glasses on and make sure that I didn't forget anything. So I guess, you know, I'll just finish by saying that um, myself, I'm, you know, as Sula said, I'm the academic services director, so I'm in charge of the advising office, but I'm also an advisor. I see people every day. I have two fabulous advisors who work for me, Vicki and Sai, and um, we are, you know, I always tell my colleagues at the university, because there's a lot of variability in how well advising offices are staffed, how well they feel supported by their department. We are incredibly fortunate that, that we are, I feel, sufficiently staffed, that we can see all the students we need to see, that we can see prospective students, um, that we can do things like, you know, I get to run this class in fall for transfer students. My colleague Vicki runs a class every fall that's for students preparing to enter grad school. Um, my colleague Sai does um, every quarter, except for summer, he teaches one of our field work classes. So we get the opportunity to work with our students in, in different contexts. Um, and, you know, to provide, I hope, the kind of support that, that you really all deserve to have. Um, there, it's usually open doors when you come to our office. Certain points in the quarter, it's a little crunchy, and you might have to wait a while. But um, but we're we're you know there for seeing our students first. So I I hope that we support students in in the way that we set out to. I I generally do hear that that students are happy with with our department and with um, the advising office. So I think we're doing it kind of okay. Um, so just. You know, that's just to tell you that if you come to UW either as a prospective student to talk with us or as, you know, a prospective major once you get there or new to the major, we're going to, you know, be your home base. And we're going to really help connect you with all the things that you need on campus because that's half the battle. You come to a huge place that's like a giant city and you don't even know, you know, where to turn. So we'll try to send you to people instead of voice trees or websites and uh, put you in touch with, with the folks who can really help you move along. So I guess that's it.